Hello students, this tutorial is going to walk you through the process for taking your file from Bobcad and go ahead and put it onto um, the lathe and you're going to turn a top on this. So right now you should be in Bobcad and you should have um, your file ready to go. It should look something similar to this. Uh, the profile might be a little different and that's fine. But we're going to get ready. We're going to go ahead and put your mouse on turning mode or um, on turning tools which is up in the cam part tree in Bobcad. And when you right click on that, you'll get an option to post and save as. You'll notice in the bottom left corner, it should have a bunch of letters and code. That's the code we're going to actually export. We're not saving a Bobcad file. We're saving a, a, a post file for the computer to actually read. This is NC code is what you would call it. You can go ahead and save it onto the desktop. Notice that it's an NC file. Again, not a Bobcad file. You do want to also save your Bobcad file somewhere so you can edit it. Go ahead and save it on the desktop. And then from the desktop, you want to drag it into that shortcut to small mill. That is going to be where um, all your files are going to be housed so that later on you're ready to go. So there should be something like that, small mill, shortcut, something like that. It's a network folder on your desktop. After that, you can go over to the CNC lathe, and this has a computer on top. <clears throat> Once you get there, you're going to open up Techno Metal Lathe. And once that interface opens up, you'll click on File. And this is going to be your main interface for that. So go ahead and click on File. And when that opens up, it'll take a minute. Um, while it's loading up, you can look and make sure that those lights are all on on the left side. The Stop button is your emergency stop. You can turn it clockwise, and it will um, pull out if it's not ready to go. But when you turn the machine on, um, it should say Ready, and the power should be on. You can also use that Power button in the bottom left corner make sure all the lights are on and it's ready to go. Once the file opens up on the computer, you'll see this. You want to use the D folder, and um, not one of the folders in the D drive, but that is that, uh, that networked file. And your file should be one of the NC or NCD files over on the right side. And for the lays, you'll want an NC file. If you click on that um, right window, and then after that you start typing, it'll actually shoot to the section that has your letter for your name there. So in this case, we're going to use Jake Menser's file. He's helping me out, helping me out a little bit today. And from there, um, just do File Open. It's got an option there, and it's going to say you got a new configuration file. That's fine. Just hit OK. And from there, you can click on Preview, and it will run through what the cutter is going to do. Now, in that process, if it just cuts off the part, uh, you need to go back and make some changes. Or if it's very thin or too thick, now is the time to go back and change that Bobcad file. Not after you've destroyed a piece of wood. If the preview looks good, then you're going to use the arrows um, on the lathe to move on the Z and the X axes. And so um, you can either, right now we're starting in continuous mode, and you're going to move the Z axis away uh, from the chuck. If you look inside there, so the Z axis is plenty away. That way, um, after it's been moved away, we can go ahead and get a piece of wood from that chest that's sitting on top of the computer over there maybe on top of the lathe. Tighten your part inside the chuck. About a half of an inch is all you need. Tighten it up pretty snug. The part that's in the chuck is going to get wasted and that's okay. If you look down on top, I've got about a half inch inside of there. The program you're running in there should be about an inch to two inches long. Uh, if you're doing a ch Maybe you're doing a chest piece instead, that's fine. But you want to make sure that you've got plenty of clearance so the cutter doesn't hit the lathe. So it should look something like that make sure you take the chuck key out. And then after that, we're going to use the, um, the jog mode on the computer, and we're going to get it close, and then you can actually click, um, you can actually click on the 600 number that you see up there on the top right, and um, that's going to let it spin, and while it's spinning, there you go. You can actually click on there. It will start turning. And then you're going to move the cutter in step mode once you get close until it's just barely cutting on the bottom right corner. Um, true zero, 0 is in the center of the stock, and we're not actually going to do that. We have what's called an offset, an offset of whatever the radius is, and that's programmed in the machine. You should be operating on a 7 8 inch stock here. And then after that... Uh, we're going to actually go in here to zero is what you want. Not home as it shows on that one, but zero all. And um, 
so it should just barely be touching that. Once that's ready, you're ready to start. You should be wearing safety glasses while you're doing this, and you sh also should make sure that um, you're ready to stop it. You shouldn't start it and leave. If something goes wrong, you need to be nearby. Uh, the top case will have to be gone. Will have to be down in the cover any time that you're trying to um, operate the machine. It's got a, a safety switch there. So while you're running, it's going to run a running log of how far it's complete, as well as a visual of what it's looking like. And it should be cutting from right to left. And that's going to keep as much stock as possible and keep it as thick and as strong as possible for as long as possible. When it finally gets to the end, it'll do a finish pass. And that finish pass will be very slow. It's at a, maybe at a higher speed. Um, and it'll be about half the feed rate, which is how fast it's traveling across there. And then after you finish that, uh, you can go ahead and lift the cover off when it finishes and take it out with the chuck. Then you're going to go over to the engine lathe, which is for manual metal working. And on this machine, uh, the emergency stop is that red button. You're going to go ahead and chuck the top inside of here. Notice that the chuck key has been removed here. And on the left side, again, that emergency stop. And on the right side is your on-off switch. So emergency stop, red button. The on-off switch is that lever that <clears throat> that uh, Jake has his hand on. If you lift it up, it will um, turn clockwise. And if you push it down, it will go, go counterclockwise as you face it. So you might have to push it a little over and down. You want to make sure that you keep your fingers um, far as far from that chuck as you can. And you'll note that he's just sanding it right now. We're going to pull on the underside or actually pull it back towards us. That way, if the paper were to break, we would fall away from the machine and not into it. And also notice that his hands are completely to the side of the chuck. Um, we never want our arms straddling or anything like that. He doesn't have any loose clothing. Um, his sleeves are rolled up, and he doesn't have any jewelry on as well. The lathe is one of the few machines that could really hurt you badly, so watch out for that. After you finish, you can go ahead and um, use the lever to put it in neutral and then push stop can use the chuck key to uh, remove your part and then secure it in a vise. Cut off the spinning top with a hacksaw. Do a little sanding and then there's Jake who's got his completed top. So best of luck and uh, if you have questions check with your group members and then check with me. Thanks.